In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I see a few unfamiliar faces. We welcome you this evening as we gather in celebration of the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And so as is our tradition, we take a moment, set aside those distractions we carried in here with us. Thank God for the blessings we've received as we ask for His guidance, His love, His mercy, and His forgiveness. Lord Jesus, You are our Creator and our Redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, You teach us by word and example. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, on the third day You rose from the dead and now seated at the right hand of the Father, plead our cause. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all His works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all His ways, and holy in all His works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Ah, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a saying that became popular in the United States Army during the Second World War. What is difficult we will do immediately. What is impossible will take a little bit more time. In tonight's Gospel, Jesus asked His disciples to do the impossible. They're in a deserted place. They have no resources, no means. He asked them to feed a crowd of over 5,000 people. And all they have is five loaves. Two fish. It just simply can't be done. And yet by the end of the story, all have eaten and all are satisfied. Indeed, twelve baskets of fragments were left over. So how are we to understand this story of Jesus? Why does Jesus ask His disciples to do the impossible? And is He in some way asking us to do the same. A popular Christian storyteller by the name of Bob Benson relates an incident from his own life that can help us answer this question. You see, Bob was planning on going to a parish summer picnic, but he was running late. By the time he was ready to go, he realized that he didn't have any food to bring. And so he looked in the refrigerator and All he found were a couple slices of bread, a dried out piece of bologna, and a little bit of mustard in the bottom of the jar. It'd have to do, though. So he made himself this pathetic bologna sandwich and put it in a brown bag, and off he went to the picnic. He found a place in the pavilion next to a family that had actually brought a feast. They had fried chicken, potato salad, baked beans, sliced tomatoes, four homemade chocolate pies. Bob sat down and opened his bag and looked at his pathetic bologna sandwich. One of the members of the family next to him saw it and came over to him. And they said, Bob, I have a suggestion. Why don't we put our food together? I mean, we have more than enough chicken and potato salad and baked beans. And moreover, everybody in our family loves bologna sandwiches. So that's what they did. Bob sat there and ate like a king, although he came like a pauper. Now, in effect, this same thing is what happens in this gospel. Jesus tells his disciples, 
bring to me what you have. Those five loaves, those two fish, whatever. Let's put it together with what I have and let's see what happens. Jesus extends that same invitation to us. When we have to face something that just seems totally impossible in our life, He invites us to join our resources. At times we have to face a new challenge, maybe at work, at home, in school. We look at the challenges and say, you know, I don't think I really have the wisdom or the skill to pull this off. Doing this just seems impossible. And Jesus says, well, why don't you take your skill and together with mine, let's see if we can make this thing happen together. When there's somebody we love who's in trouble, maybe because of sickness or a dysfunctional relationship, maybe it's addiction to drugs or alcohol, we want with all of our hearts to make that situation better for them. But we know it's a decision that they have to make for themselves. We can't make it for them. And Jesus says to us, well, why don't you bring me your care and your love and we'll put it together with my care and my love. And then together, let's see if we can make a difference. When we lose someone we love because of death, misunderstanding, divorce, when we have to leave a situation because it's very uncomfortable, something familiar that we have to give up, we look at those situations and say, you know, I really don't know that I have enough strength to get through this. And Jesus says to us, well, bring me your strength and let's put it together with my strength and then together let's face the future. Now the invitation that Jesus gives us is quite specific. He doesn't say to us, okay, just sit back and I'll take care of everything. He asks us to contribute what we have, no matter how small or insignificant it might seem. He wants us to bring to Him that little bit of strength, that wisdom, that hope that we have, and put it together with His. Of course, there's no guarantee that every time we try, that we will succeed and that all of our troubles are just going to evaporate. But when you have to face the impossible, it's better not to face it alone. If something is difficult, do it immediately. But if something is impossible, it's better to join forces with the Lord. Amen. And now let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hopeful hearts we bring our needs to God, whose love is stronger than death, and who nourishes us with the bread of life. 
that those who lead God's people will learn humility from those whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That children will learn responsibility from their parents, and that parents will learn gladness from their children. We pray to the Lord. (laughs) That those who are suffering from illness, injury, or chronic pain will experience God's healing love. We pray to the Lord. That those who are called to the priesthood or religious life will receive the support they need as they discern their vocation. We pray to the Lord. For all those serving in the military and for their families, we pray to the Lord. For all those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week, we pray to the Lord. For the members of our parish family of St. Michael, who help to make our church a place of worship and welcome to all, we pray to the Lord. For William Bill Bostaff, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. That the petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts will be heard and answered by the Lord in communion with the Holy Spirit, Mary, the Mother of God, our patron, St. Michael, and all the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we bring You these needs this evening, confident in the power of Your love and the abundance of Your generosity. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, We proclaim Your death, O Lord, until You come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer You, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that You've held us worthy to be in Your presence and minister to You. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so we now have the privilege and the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of Your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, everybody. Peace.
Lamb of God, You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. If you would give to them. The body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Kathy, no, she left. Thank you.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock, there will be a parade going right down Grand Central, right in front of our church, for the law enforcement officers in support of them. The blue lives matter. And so if you would like to join me, I'm going to be out here at 3 o'clock. We're going to have some things flash up on our LED sign in support of them. They're starting down at 60th Street, and I believe go all the way down to the uh, new Dairy Queen, 28th Street. So if you'd like to be here, please do show your support. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.